Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with our Megalog viewer software in reviewing our data logs. So when we're working with our Tuner Studio software, we're gonna have our live data that's gonna be displaying on the pages as we do our tuning. We're gonna have our graph layouts or our page layouts set up specifically. We took a look at how to do that in previous videos in this training course. Now, that is great to do real-time tuning. If we're just making a change in our field table or maybe making some idle control changes or we wanna turn on maybe a radiator fan, using our Tuner Studio software and using that live data it will be invaluable. However, if we're trying to review how a car is gonna be running, maybe in a dyno pool or on track for five or 10 minutes, we cannot look at that live data. You're simply not gonna be able to remember all of the channels and what they're reading visually. You have to capture the data and play it back. And that's where our Megalog viewer software is gonna to come into play. We're gonna capture our data logs in our Tuner Studio and then play them back in our Megalog viewer. I'm gonna be showing you how to work with the Megalog viewer and some basic details about it in this video. Then we're gonna take a little bit more extensive look at it in the next video. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check out our Megalog viewer software. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our data logging with our Megascore applications. So whether we're gonna be on a Megascore one, a two, a three, or a Microsquare controller, we're gonna to need to data log in order to capture data and play it back and figure out what is going on. It's a vital part of the tuning process and you're not able to do your tuning without data logging. So I'm gonna be reviewing how to quickly capture the data logs in our Tuner Studio. We went over that already in the beginning of the training course. So we'll just do a quick refresher of that. And then we're gonna be moving into the separate logging software to play back the data logs that we capture here in our Tuner Studio software. So we're not able to play the logs back in here, unfortunately, we have to use a separate software. So in order to capture a data log, it's a pretty simple process. We go up to data logging here, we can hit start logging, that's gonna initiate the log. That's also, when we click this, give it a second here, it's gonna be saving this as the year, the month, the day, and then the actual timestamp here. And this is a useful way to save a data logging, or data log, I should say, uh, because it's going to be easy to trace through a folder that you have multiple logs saved in. And we can see right here, this data log folder that I have going, we have a lot of data logs, and all of these are gonna be saved by the year, the month, the date, and then the actual timestamp. So we're able to play back and quickly find logs associated with um, whatever we were doing, and uh, we can kind of sort through them that way. So I usually use the file name and keep this as this default timestamping here. Now, once we start the log, it's gonna be capturing all of the data here that um, we have channels that are available. Now we're able to filter that if we don't wanna capture every single detail or every single parameter or channel, which I recommend that you do so you don't leave anything out. We could actually go here to data logging and we go to logging profiles and we could start to filter out all the fields that we have or the log fields. And we can look here, I can trace down through this log field list and I could weed out some things that I didn't want. I could grab something and transfer it here and it could move it to the not logged list. And then um, I'm, I'd be able to omit that particular channel for my logging. Now again, on a Megasquirt one or two or a Microsquirt application, I definitely recommend uh, that you don't go in and filter out any of the logged fields. Just log everything. On a Megasquirt 3 application, we might find that it could speed up the logging rate, and we might find that it logs a little bit better, and when we play it back in the separate logging software, it's going to be a little bit crisper of a data log. So it's an option that you have. Um, this is gonna be a Megasquirt 2 example here first. We are gonna be taking a look at a Megasquirt 3 because there's a lot more channels that we have available to us to log and review. So Megasquirt 2, I recommend that you leave it alone. And then just very quickly here under data logging, we can do trigger logging and this is gonna be what's going to allow us to start the log. So instead of going here and doing control L to start and control B to stop our log, again, that's coming from right here. It's, we can do the same functionality. Instead of doing that, we can go here and set it up based on throttle percent. So we might say we're interested in capturing data during a tuning session when our TPS sensor is gonna be greater than 80%. And then we could do our stop logging when we could say when the TPS is less than 80%. So it's gonna record everything 80% higher and 80% lower, it'll stop. That's gonna be an option. Or again, alternatively, you can do control L to start 